You signed with Minnesota, and you were going to be the only 40-year-old in the league until Cheryl Swoops came in and signed with Tulsa. What does that say about the longevity of the WNBA players? It says a lot. Um, I think Cheryl's signing has improved my standing tremendously. I'm no longer the only 40-year-old. Um, but it, it, it just says a lot for the league and, and the caliber of players also to be able to come back. Um, she's had a layoff and to come back and still be in top form. And so for me, I'm excited to see her play myself. Um, and just being 40, you know, uh, women don't really tell their age normally, but mine is told everywhere, in every broadcast, every time I play. And so it's become sort of like, you know, just air for me. I never really think about it. It's just about playing and what you can contribute. Now you've been submitting updates via Facebook on mm -hmm. camp with the links. What inspired you to do that? And what have you learned as a writer? Um, I love to write. I studied it in school, and so that's one of my, my things I do normally at home. And so I keep a diary, a journal anyway, of the things that go on during training camp. And I wanted something special. Um, one, because I am 40. Um, and uh, two, I don't know how long I'll be playing you know, after this. And three, I think it's something special that's going to be happening here with the Minnesota Lynx. How has camp gone so far? Um, camp is gone just like I thought it would go. You know, in the beginning, a lot of the young players are pretty nervous. Mm -hmm. They came in the first day, it was about 22 turnovers in five minutes. <laughs> and so, um, after we got the jitters out, you know, yesterday we played against the guys and uh, I think a lot of players relaxed and just played. And you know, in camp, you try so hard to impress. You don't really do what, what's natural for you. So you think a lot about the game and maybe you should have made a layup or you should have passed, but you didn't. When you play other people and they're guarding you, you kind of go back into your natural mode, which is really why the coaches brought you here. They want to see you as a player and what you naturally do. And so um, yesterday's scrimmage helped a lot, and I think our game on Tuesday at Concordia against Indiana will allow the coaches to be able to evaluate, but I think it will also allow the players to be able to see how they're going to fit into what we're trying to do here with the Minnesota Lynx. Do you think that's uh, where the team has made the most progress since camp started? Just maybe slowing down, breathing, stop thinking? <laughs> yes, those are my exact words. Take a deep breath, slow down, relax. It'll all come back to you. We didn't just start playing yesterday. And so I think for a lot of players, they go a thousand miles a minute. And I definitely can teach them about slowing down almost to turtle speed. And you slow down the game up here. It's still fast on the court, but now you can see things better see maybe an option you didn't see before, a pass you didn't see before, a lane to the basket you didn't see before. So how have the younger players responded to your advice? Oh well, at least in my face. You never know. But uh, as far as I know, the, the girls are receptive. Um, I'll have my quiet day today because you know you don't want to keep talking and keep talking because after a while you stop listening just like when your parents got on you. After like the third time, you're like, whatever, I don't listen to anything. <laughs> so um, today's my quiet day, and you just want to see from day to day if players can change and, and improve themselves. If you can take count of yourself, and then the next day come in and say, I need to do this better. I didn't do it well yesterday, or I didn't do it in, well in the game. Those are the type of players you want to keep. And I think for me, and I know Coach Reeves and all the coaching staff, they want to see how the players can evaluate themselves and move on to the next level on the days when you are talking are you are you talking so everybody can hear or are you pulling are you pulling individuals aside I think I I think I do a little of both um, with the bigs I tend to talk after because with bigs we don't remember like we we're, we're only focused on what we do I know post players and so you have to go after and say the exact moment that something occurred so if there was something like you didn't set a good screen like I'll yell that because guards set screens post but if you didn't get in front of your post player on defense like our coaches tell us to do, then after the play is finished, you need to come, let me tell you, hey, that leg needs to go over. Because this is how we play post defense. Um, and I think that's, so I'm half and half. Cheryl is liking what you're doing for the team, having another assistant coach. Is mm -hmm. that something you see yourself doing after you do decide to end your playing career? Definitely. I hope so. But I don't know. When am I going to end my playing career? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I'll, yeah. 
When is Brett Favre going to retire? <laughs> when is Brett? Hey, those are questions I definitely sit and think about all the time. But at least she hasn't retired and come back and retired. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you talked about him as an idol, though, kind of representing yes. players in your bracket last summer. And mm -hmm. so maybe what did you take from him trying to get one more storybook ending for your career? I don't think it's a storybook ending for me. I, I mean, I have my title, and so, um, and I have the years that I've played and, and your legacy. Um, but I think for Brett, you know, it's still about co competition, and I think that's the same for me. Why at 40 and a half you come back and play for a team? Um, it's definitely not because I don't want to be home with my family. It's just because there's something still burning inside of you that you haven't figured out how to quench yet or put in something, some other activity. And for me, it's. It's about the competition, it's about the level of play in the league, and it's about the camaraderie. You know, you miss that when you don't play. I miss seeing the girls. When I'm at home, if my family's not there, I miss being here, hanging out. I don't miss practice. You're talking about practice. No. <laughs> I just miss There's the, headline. the bond. <laughs> I just miss that bond that, you know, you have. And, and, and every day, you're thinking about a new team. How can we beat them? Now, you did some interviews right after your signing on how you took care of your body. What have you done to keep your body in shape at 40 that you maybe didn't do at 28? Uh, wow, deny myself, <laughs> go to bed hungry a lot, um, eat a lot of ice. No, it's, it's really just nutrition and uh, on the days off doing something, yoga, Pilates, a mix of yoga and Pilates, P90X. Have you and Simone um, been doing P90X together now? No, I, I, Simone does hers by herself. I'm at P90X Plus. I taught Simone about P90X, and then I've moved on to the Plus one. So she said she's not ready just yet for me there, but we'll 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 start merging some stuff. You know, you can merge other things. Like I do yogas and Pilates with the P90X. So as you as you get older, and as she gets older, she'll merge things that'll make you know you don't have to do so much of this, and you can do less of this and more of that. Do you have? It seems a little silly, but do you have? individual goals for the season or is it just the team goal of winning? Outside of, outside of staying healthy, um, the main individual goal I think for me is just uh, the rebounding. Um, improving the rebounding edge for the Minnesota Lynx. I guess that's team and my individual. So, you know, last year was low for me in rebounding. I want to get it back to where it was previously. I think I averaged 7.6. I'm not sure. But I need to be somewhere around 7.6, not 6.5. You know, and for me, that's important, and keep my free throw percentage up. Since you've been around the league for quite a while, I know you've been through a lot of camps with a lot mm -hmm. of different coaches. How do you, what do you like or dislike about the way Cheryl's on campus? Well, first, I haven't been to a lot of training camps because before, Europe didn't care about the WNBA season. So we played almost, I remember Connecticut coming right before the first game, going to Washington with them, and it's the first game of the season. Um, so this is only my fourth training camp, actually, which is probably why I'm still playing in the league. Because <laughs> if I had to go through a lot of them, I would definitely be retired. Um, me and Cheryl have a, have a thing already from Detroit. And uh, just as a, a, a person that I go to for advice on, on different things, um, she has my utmost respect. And so when you come into camp and not being in a lot, I don't know what to expect. Um, I thought we would be doing some two-a-days, and I was trying to steal my mind to be ready. Um, but she's... She's honestly just been a pros coach, which I knew she was. And what that really entails is that knowing what player needs to do what at what time. We, as basketball players, have ADD. So after two hours, we are faded, no matter what people tell you. And so her majority of her intense stuff is done at the beginning when we're the most in tune. And so towards the end, where we really need to focus, we start scrimmaging, control scrimmages, where this is the point where most of us with ADD go south. Now we have to all buckle down and focus our energies to complete the goal because now this is the fourth quarter. And so she's learned from being around Bill Lambeer, from coaching previously in college, that this is the style that's going to work best for us. And, you know, I love it. I, I love being in here in training camp. I know that she gets us in. We do it intense. We get out. She doesn't. If you do three-man weave down and back as hard as you can, you're not going to do it eight times. When she sees everyone busting their butt that first time, she's done. She doesn't write on the paper, let's do it for two minutes just because. One time, you're locked in, let's move on to the next thing. And let's move on to the next thing. When we have trouble, we stick on something. But once we're done, let's move on to the next thing. And that's what I love about her.
Have you been able to meet up with Bill Lambeer since you've been in town? Is he Not in town? at all. <laughs> I don't know where. I think Bill goes to Florida during the summers. When he, because when he was coaching uh, the, the Shock, he was always talking about Florida and Vegas and <laughs> golfing and gambling. So, <laughs> hey, he's a smart guy. I'm sure he's got plenty of money to do both. You mentioned about um, on, your, on the uh, Facebook post about the rotation mm -hmm. of uh, post players guarding uh, mm -hmm. guards. For some of the other teams, have you planned on, does that happen in practice or not? Um, that definitely doesn't happen, and that's something that Cheryl has done here. Um, most of the time, the bigs stay with the bigs on defense. You might have a quicker big like Rebecca Brunson or Maya Moore guarding one of us, but we never guard the guards, and the guards never guard us. And so to, for her to have done that, that's what impressed me. I was like, wow, this is the first time. You know, some teams, like in Connecticut, we would run a play and have the post players be guards and the guards be the post players but never on defense. And I mean, she had us all in there. Like I said, Candace Wiggins was battling me. You know, Maya Moore was battling Amber Harris. Um, our smallest, Angel Robinson, was battling um, Jess. So it was, it was funny, but at the same time, you see what kind of character those players are made of because you could just give in. You're a little, we're posting you, we're strong. But I mean, pushing up the line, doing the post defense that we worked on, it was great to see. And I, I, I mean, I applaud them because it's hard playing the posts. I know, because we've been playing it all our lives and they're in there battling. And it wasn't just, oh, one token pass. We don't do that here in training camp. It's we're going hard as we can. We're trying to get the ball and you got to stop us from getting it. And they really played well.